Hi guys, okay, just to reinforce what we just learned in the how to read your cervical MRI video, let me show you how to read my latest cervical MRI uh, disc that I got from Good Samaritan Hospital not too long ago. Um, I'll, let me throw it in this camera over here as well. I got double cameras going here. Actually, I got three cameras. I got the screen capture going as well. Uh, so let's show you how to to get this thing up and running. Let's show you what Onus 2.5 looks like. Uh, so download it, Onus 2.5. Just Google uh, free Onus 2.5 for PC. Now I'm not a Mac person, but there's one called Osirix that used to be free. So I think you could download that. And there's other DICOM viewing softwares that you, uh, software programs that you can download and do basically the same thing with. Uh, but this is how Onus works. Uh, so let's Let's fire up Onus, double click on Onus. We'll let that, and while that's going, uh, I am going to, I don't have a DVD drive in my laptop here. So went to Best Buy, it's probably like five years ago. Uh, but here's an LG, an LG DVD burner right here and DVD drive. Uh, so just open that up. See, I don't know which camera to go to. Let's do it, this one first. Uh, just open that up, throw the shiny part down, snap it in there, okay, and don't recommend dropping it like that. Let me make sure it's snapped in. Okay, now it's snapped in. Now you just shut that, and let me show in the other camera. So again, just shut it, and great. Just throw it out of the way. Now it's USB drive, so you gotta plug it in your computer. I don't have to show you how to do that. Hopefully you can plug in a USB device. And great, so Onus is uploaded. Let's click OK. And over here under sources, there's two sources, local. I could have downloaded these files onto my computer. It would have been much faster, but I'll just keep it on the DVD drive. Uh, so go to the DVD drive and it's automatically searching there. It might say, there might be a button that says OK. Just click OK for it to search. And now it's loading the DICOM files. I think there's about 500 of them. Uh, so we'll give this a minute. I recommend while this is going, I recommend to copy all the images off that DVD and put them in a folder on your hard drive somewhere on your laptop uh, or desktop uh, and it's much much faster it runs pretty slow when you're using the DVD drive it still works but um, it's just kind of a slow process okay um, so it's still looking for files I'll come back when this is when this is done okay there we go we're all done you can see it's loaded two series or two uh, two images up it's loaded a brain and a CT or a uh, cervical MRI. So that's the one we want. So left click on that once and you can see all the series. We can count how many series there are. Now you already know what series means because we've talked about that in the video. Uh, so click on any one of these, doesn't matter because they're all gonna be pulled up right here where we can mess around with them. The first screen you get is uh, shows four different cuts where you can go over four at once if you want. Just double click on any one of these. And that'll bring up um, this. So what are we looking at? Well, we know we can look here, a sagittal T2 weighted series. In fact, this is cut number nine or instance number nine on series two. Remember we said there's six series, so I could go over here. This must be, here's the brain MRI starts right here. So this must be the sixth uh, the sixth series right here. And sure enough, six series six right there, instance one, so this is the first cut. Right, so you guys already know how to do that. Uh, and let me get that out of the way. All right, so now this, let's, because I know what you want. You want to see how the cut line works. Where's the cut line, the all-important cut line? So to get the cut line up, we have to go to view, and you can, I could turn off my DICOM information if I wanted, but I don't care. So I leave it up there for me. Uh, and 
go back to view, click split the screen. And now I always put the T2 weighted images, the sagittals over here. I always start with T2. Uh, and the next thing we need to do, you can't even see that, right? We need to make to be able to see it. Uh, so go to this little crooked line right here. And if you go in clockwise, uh, kind of a half circle, you can adjust the contrast how you like it. And that's fine for me. All right now over here, left click over here once. Let's put the there's the AXT2. See that there? Uh, let's click on that. I don't need four. One is fine. Let's do the little counterclockwise arc motion to get it how we like. Like it. And now let's get the magnifying glass to blow this up. All right, so this should look familiar. And okay, let's see if you learned anything. What? So is this a T1 or T2 weighted? I kind of already said that, didn't I? But how do you know it's a T2 weighted? The cerebral spinal fluid, right? Anything with water glows white. So swelling, inflammation, uh, cerebral spinal fluid glows white. So this is definitely a T2 weighted here. And here it is over here. And we know from the last video, that's the spinal cord right there. But now the beauty is I want to see every single one of these instances or every one of these cuts in this series. So we're starting at instance one. That means we're all the way up at the top. If I just left click over here one time, um, it's going to use the sagittal series as kind of a, uh, a map. Uh, or a, a table of contents where we can see what cut we're through. Uh, so right now we're through the body of, well, you tell me, where are we? Right? We said if if you see this little peg sticking up, that's C2. That's the dens of C2. So we're going through the body of C2. So the cut goes through the body of C2. So I should see, on the axial, I should see the body I should see a white patch, I should see the spinal cord, I should see another white patch, and then I should see the epidural fat. It missed the spinous processes right here. If I go over here, sure enough, there's the body of C2, there's the anterior part of the thecal sac, cerebral spinal fluid, there's the spinal cord, there's the posterior cerebral spinal fluid, and there's the epidural fat. Missed. See the cuts not through the, sp uh, through the spinous process. See how that works? So let's go down now. Let's take let's look at that C2 disc. Okay, and sometimes these cuts are not perfect, especially this is a you know real quick hospital. This is not a full series. Usually there's 12 series. Uh, this is just a basic bare bones to make sure you know I didn't have anything horribly wrong with me. Like any blood clots or anything compressing the spinal cord, which I didn't. Or, but I don't know. Let's go. We'll look. We'll see for ourselves what's going on here. All right. So there's the C2 disc. Uh, there's the best cut through it. So see how it's going right through the disc? Remember? Two, three, four, five, six. That looks like a six. Sorry, seven. That's the cervical spine. Um, so this is the disc right here. What disc is that? It's, it's the C2-3 motion segment. That's the C2 disc. Great. Uh, there's the uncinate processes here. And there's the disc. So what I want to do is look off the back of it here to see if there's anything sticking out. Remember we said that disc herniations will be visible as big bumps sticking out the back here. And I don't see anything like that. It looks nice and clear. The neural foramen look wide open to me. Here's the neural foramen right in this region. Okay, this is not a high enough quality MRI where I can see the uh, the anterior and posterior uh, roots, the motor and sensory root very well, uh, or the dorsal root ganglia. But I can see the superarticular process. Let me see if I can get that better. No, that's about it. And see, so th this is jumping too much, so it makes me think it's not a 2 millimeter cut. I always order 2 millimeter cuts in the cervical spine. And of course, this is built for speed, so it is not. If we look right down here, the thickness of these axials is ridiculous, four millimeter cuts. Um, so basically, they're jumping too much. If I want to see, let's say I see something right here in this corner of the bone, and I think there's a little tumor here. I want to go down one cut to see that tumor. Oops. Okay, so I, I think there's a tumor right here, and I want to go down one cut. It jumps right over the top of it. 
see how that works. If they're two millimeter cuts, I'm not going to have that problem. But nevertheless, let's just go see what else we can see. So I don't see any problem with two. Let's go down to three. Or let's go through the body here. There's the body of what? There's a cut through the body. Um, so this is not the disc. Right, let's get a better cut through the pedicles. There's right through the pedicles. See the pedicles right here that we've talked about? Pedicles, right? We're, we're in between the neural foramen. Can't see them. Um, there's a vertebral artery there. There's another vertebral artery. Um, there. Now, this is probably volume averaging, uh, so it doesn't look like a herniation to me because there's some big veins right there, the epidural venous plexus, the anterior epidural venous plexus. Sometimes the computer gets confused and it, it just kind of draws this in as part of the bone or part of the disc. Uh, but let's go down and see what the L3 disc looks like. See what I mean? Because you guys would go, oh my god, there's a herniation. But you always have to double confirm that. You can't just say it's a herniation yet. Um, so if that's a herniation, we will see it over on this series as well. Uh, so let's blow this up so you can see a little better. And let's see if that's a herniation. Okay, so now I'm putting a left click over here. So it's going to put the cut line, it's going to use the axial as the reference. And I can see how I can move the cuts around back and forth. Let's put a cut right through that bump of C3 and I don't confirm there's anything there. See, there's no herniated disc. There's nothing sticking out to confirm that. So that's an illusion. See, these can be a little tricky to read. All right. Uh, let's go down to, or was that C2? No matter what it was. Or I'm sorry, that was C3. Let's go. See, same thing. There's nothing there. Uh, let's go down to C4 now. So I'm going to click back over here in the axials to use the sagittal as the, the, as the guide. Um, there's another one of those bumps. Oh my gosh, is that a herniation? Let's go back over here to C4 and put a cut through that. No, there's nothing there. All right, so there's no herniation there. See how that works? All right, I think you get the deal there. Uh, let's see. Let's go to a T1. Now, there's no T1 sagittal series, but there is a T1 weighted. I'm sorry, there's no, one, no T1 axial series, but there is a T1 weighted sagittal series, which has a little better clarity. Let's go check the facet joints in the neural foramen to see if there's any problems there. Right? So we'll have to use the axial still uh, because we don't have a T1 axial, unfortunately. All right. So let's go left click here on the sagittal. Uh, let's look at the right side. Remember these images are reversed, right? There's the little R right here. So that's this, the left side is over here. All right, so I got a cut starting. Where's the neural foramen? Neural foramen is right here. All right, just keep that in mind. So let's let's go look and see if we can see a cut through it. Let's see if we got a good cut through it. No, we really don't. There's there's a cut right there. You can see. Uh, that's why the obliques are best. If you if you're worried about bone spurs or stenosis or something in the neural foramen. They look wide open here, so I wouldn't need uh, a oblique view. But the ob uh, oblique series would put, let's see, it would put cuts like this obliquely through the neural foramen. Because here's the neural foramen. See how it goes? It goes 45 degrees to the front. Uh, so these, these, when you have cuts going down like this, you don't see it very good. You can see it down here. You can see the foramen here better. Pull these up, the lower ones, and you can see the nerve roots in there. See, there's an exiting nerve root, and there's the neural foramen. Plenty of wiggle room there. I can see all the way down. We're getting into the upper thoracic now, uh, but no problem. No problem here. There's another one here. I'm looking at the articular pillars. A little bit of arthritis in this one, but uh, nothing really that exciting. Pretty boring MRI, which is good. Let's check the other side. And, yeah, you can see them up higher here. Now we can't see the lower ones. 
uh, but they look pretty good from what I can see. And based on these uh, these images, you know, if I go down, just about done with this. But let's just go down and finish, because I didn't go down low. So this is a mid sagittal. Let's go down to the next level. Looks really good. Now we got a glimpse of the dorsal root ganglia here. You can see a shadow of it right there. Uh, the disc looks good. That's bone though. We have a cut. See how the cut is right? We're right at the bottom between bone and disc. So that's not the greatest cut, but it looks good. All right. So these are definitely harder to read. The lumbar are easier to see. All right. But that's, you got the idea. So I don't think I have any more to say. I think you will, if you've went through the How to Read Your MRI video, and now if you, you've watched this little supplemental here, you are in really good shape. You should be able to easily understand and look at your, look at your imaging. All right, we will see you in the next video. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up if you like it. See you in the next video.